Yeah, we're Boy. waiting on no. That's how it works, right? Boy. <clears throat> like huge. Stretch out my neck muscles. Mmm. <laughs> that is good for the little body. Mmm. <laughs> That's not the one. We doing? Yeah. No. What are we doing? That's right. It's on the wrong document. Hey, I'm just gonna need you to settle down, Rob. You're a little <laughs> cool. You're, You're a little jet, aggressive sir. here. Today's episode of Thunderheads is brought to you by Wellness Perspective. Wellness Perspective makes it easier for you to live healthfully. They're also making it easier for us to do this podcast. Check them out at mywellnessperspective.com to learn more. You messed up a little. <laughs> Thanks. You're listening to Thunderheads, a podcast for Thunder fans by Thunder fans. Welcome to Thunderheads. We're talking off season, all things off season today. If you're tuning into YouTube Live, we're psyched to have you. I'm Brandon Soul, joined by the Thunder Tie himself. It is Mr. Justin Wright. I'm much too young to feel this damn old. Garth Brooks. God, give someone else a chance. I buzzed in. We need yeah. buzzers. We, I buzzed in. That's the so. next purchase. Right? Garth Brooks. <laughs> hey, Ooh, good job, bud. Got it. You got it. So Mark one for me. He's on. He's on the tape delay. That's why. Mm. It's, uh, not his, it's not his fault. That man who also got it right. That is the doctor, Rob Larson. Hey, I've been getting a lot of uh, victory royales. Just so you guys know. Have you? Oh, yeah. Been kicking that yeah. ass. Yep. Been getting. What? He's a Fortniter. Okay. Damn. So, like, how much do you play? All the time. I can dodge for it. Anytime I sign in, he's playing Fortnite. Oh, no. Not all the time. That's why we're not getting anything done with the podcast. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Dark and stormy Jason Lewis is in the house. Yes, sir. All right. Today, we're taking a look at the Thunder's roster heading into the offseason. We're breaking down all scenarios in relation to Paul George and Carmelo Anthony's decisions and how Presti is going to approach each scenario. We're going to look at potential free agent fits for the Thunder. We'll take a look at the Thunder's draft and much, much more. But first, yeah, don't laugh. <laughs> let's talk about let's talk a little playoffs, guys. Let's do that. Lead it off with a little NBA. Uh, the second round has been extremely disappointing right yeah. now. But the main thing that I kind of wanted to bring up, and it's kind of funny. I think if you polled everyone, every NBA fan, before the season started, obviously the Celtics and Sixers are playing tonight, so that series isn't quite over. But it's three one Celtics. But every like I I bet the consensus consensus would have been Rockets Warriors conference finals and Celtics uh, Cavs conference finals and that's you know it didn't happen the way everyone thought it was gonna happen but that's probably what we're gonna get yeah it's kind of lame that the last like well I guess four years now um, have you could basically be like yeah this is what's gonna end up happening and it did Th thanks a lot KD yeah what an asshole yeah not four years but well I well, guess in the end like if you talk about the yeah, finals yeah. or whatever yeah. So, yeah, and also the Western Conference Finals feels like it's the finals because mm -hmm. whoever comes out of that is going to win the championship. That's a very so, good point. So I am pretty excited for that series. So you have no faith in Cavs, like actually, like what they're doing right now is actually real, or that's just LeBron carrying these guys, having the mental edge over the Raptors. I mean, if LeBron is able to do that, if he's able to beat either I don't, one of those teams, basically by himself. I mean, he has love, right? But that's pretty much it like if he's able to do that and win the championship this year uh that put, pretty much puts him like a couple steps up on the old pedestal it'd be incredible i don't think that i'd give him any chance versus the warriors but i do wonder like you would you give him zero chance against the rockets yeah, zero either? chance I, I wonder like that'd be interesting to i'm me. giving him like two to five percent in both of those series just because he's LeBron. <laughs> yeah i'd pick the rockets i think but in how many games probably six would you yeah. i'd say I'd, I'd go five and I would Ooh. be, I'd be more shocked if it went seven than four. Yeah, I just number one, like Chris Paul's definitely not, obviously never been there. Yeah. James Harden really hasn't. I mean, he's been there once with the Thunder when he was a bench player. Le LeBron, like he's God, been sad. he's been there, you know, like he's been there so many. I'd be, I just a lot of wonder times. if he. They're just such a complete team, though. They That's are. the problem. They are. they are like they're so good all the way. All the way down that roster, they're just so good. So, are you excited about the watching? Yeah, Rockets I'm super Warriors? excited to watch Rockets and Warriors, which like, is what about you, super Justin? weird. Oh, I'm sorry, I was zoning out. You should have just, just said no. <laughs> no, well, no, okay. The, the, the bad thing is, like I said, I was zoning out. I've been listening the whole time. Like, uh, look, I, is is it intriguing? Yes, it is. Do I care? Hell no, I don't. <laughs> yeah. I, I, if I honestly once. 
once the th- like, I, I didn't do it this year, but usually when the Thunder get eliminated from the playoffs, I pretty much tweet out like, oh, don't know why they're still doing this. They must have canceled the playoffs this year. That old terrible joke that I've been doing since I was like in high school. The, the thing is, is that I think that a lot of people are excited to watch just as you are, Rob. And I'm excited to watch too. It's a little sad, but I'm excited to watch. Yeah. But I, I don't really have much faith in this being like that great of a series. Yeah, you're right. I think the Rockets are a super complete team. But man, I just don't. I just so don't good. trust them. I still don't trust them when they when they go against the Warriors. I, I just yeah. To me, the Rockets are the better team overall. But at the top, the Warriors are better mm-hmm. with those with those four guys. The Rockets just can't match that. If those guys are clicking, like it will definitely be over quickly. But, but this is like the most, I guess, weak you would say the Warriors have been in like the last three years, right? No. You don't think so? No, I don't. The the Warriors are one of those teams. uh, Like the the problem with the Warriors is they look like they're at the point where they're so good they can look like they just don't care. The entire that's very true. By October through May, they can just pretty much sleepwalk through everything. Now once we hit this point, like they can turn it on and they can look scary real quick. And they've shown that already. That's the, that's the crazy. I mean, when you're in your third year, well, this is Kevin Durant's second year with them, but with the Warriors, what this is the fourth year of them being dominant or fi- fourth, fourth, year. fourth year, right? Year, yeah. mm-hmm. With them, I mean, it's hard in the regular season throughout to just stay completely focused. Yeah, like, how could you? If you're, you're that, waiting on one thing, you're just got to be bored playing the other teams where you're like, w- yeah, are you guys even no basketball? Who who is this matchup more painful for? <sighs> Thunder fans like Justin over here. Russell Westbrook or Sam Presti? Uh, like if you, if you forced all three to watch the to series. watch the series, I'm gonna go Presti. Oh no! Why? You just you're watching your guys, your old guys like play each other, and you're not anywhere close to there. See, I'm gonna go Russ because for one, just because he's an insane person, and so <laughs> you know that mm-hmm. he would be extremely frustrated. I think watching those guys, which he will not watch like can you i can't no, imagine definitely sitting down watch. and yeah, watching no. but, but, but russ always says things like that like I don't, I don't watch other teams like i feel like maybe that's a slight lie like i don't think he like watches religiously like other guys do and like watches every game big games and stuff he def- but definitely watches film like on other teams over. who's he rooting for if he was hard hard 100 yeah, percent definitely <laughs> for sure even a question because yeah. like at yeah. least they're still friends yeah i think so and I, I guess you're right on Presty. Like he did say the whole thing about not being a five year old with with uh, people who leave. But yeah, but with that, that sounds situation, like so- it's a little bit different. And that also sounds like something a five year old would say, or someone that actually does act like a. He five-year-old. says I'm not a five year old. Yeah, we don't we don't want them to not succeed. Come on, he's like that sounds like someone that doesn't want them to succeed. As he's just that. like stabbing a voodoo doll <laughs> of Kevin Durant. <laughs> I I still think it's Presty, but I think it's Presty for a weird way. Like I I think he does take everything into context. Like. We did what we needed to at the time. We, we, we missed on some of these. Obviously, you know, you, you can't sit there and blame yourself for Kevin Durant leaving. Like, Kevin Durant was just going to leave. And he, it didn't matter if you, you know, you could have brought him everything that he ever wanted. He was probably out the door anyways, I'm like, right. based on everything that we've learned since. So, I, I like, it's still hard for Presley just knowing, like, I had that. Now it's gone. Hell, even Jeff Green and Kendrick Perkins – are on the other side of the bracket. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's where it's hard for oh, Russ, Kirk. though. That's where it, I'm with Rob here. I think that's what, like, imagine being Russell Westbrook, tuning into that. And, I mean, obviously, I think he's a strong minded person for sure. It, ta- it takes a strong mind to get to this point in your career. But there's, is there not just like a little something, one minute of your day while you're watching that game, one minute of your time where you just kind of sink back and you're like, what did I do wrong? Like, why am I? Why am I not that one? I, like, why is that not happening for me? I just had a terrible, like, vision of him. If he doesn't have this, but if he had the picture of them like all huddled up with each other at oh. the, in the 2012 finals, and uh, just was watching the game while he glanced over at that picture and just a little tear, like, like the the Wolverine meme. Yeah, yeah, he's just still holding that picture. While so, what would be worse as a Thunder fan? Would it would it be worse if Durant wins another one? Or if Harden wins his first, and then KD and Durant have a ring before Russ. I think it's if Harden wins. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Dur- Durant, at this point, like, you're kind of numb to it. It's just like, it is what it you is. You expect it. Yeah, yeah exactly. But like, you, you put yourself through that already. But for Harden to win one? No, that that's one that you've you've tried to fight that battle of 2012. Like, we got Steven Adams. We had to, we had to keep Serge at the time. You've been fighting that battle 
for the longest time and for Harden to finally get one that finally just erodes everything you've ever stood on making that argument. That's the worst thing that could possibly Although, happen if you're a Thunder fan. I'm rooting for the Rockets. I want Katie's bitch ass to lose. Yeah, I do too. I do I'll too. be rooting I, for the Rockets. I, I do too, but I also like, I don't, why do I find joy in Chris Paul's misery? I oh, don't no, know. No. I, I, do, do. I do. I a hundred percent love that. I actually, I was telling you guys last night. I was like, because there was a moment where it looked like the Jazz might actually come back and win that game. And I was like, oh, that would be hilarious. You if were they jumping were up, if four they, steps forward. Yeah, if they were up 3-1 three, three, and then just lost it and just couldn't get out of the second round ever. And I was just like, oh, that would yeah. destroy their minds. Instead, you said that, and then Chris Paul scored 41 points. Yeah, yeah. I fucked so, it up. My, <laughs> my favorite Chris Paul like image in my head is when – Late in the game, whenever he was with the Clippers, like DeAndre Jordan gets the ball and he's like, he's like pointing up, yelling at him, <laughs> like oh, shoot yeah. the ball and he yeah, won't. The like he's, just holding it. he's so defeated at the end of that. Like that was so good. Now that you watch Chris Paul with the Rockets, though, it makes you think about him with the Clippers and like, like remember, go back a few years when the Thunder played the Clippers in the playoffs and they had Chris Paul guarding KD and it kind of worked. Yeah. But like just the fact that he had to do that. Yeah. yeah. Like that had to suck for him. Yeah, I the mean, whole that's... experience had to not be that great. Uh, oh, sorry. I no, go ahead. I, so, no, uh, I, I just I wanted to backtrack a little bit. Like Chris Paul sucks, anyways. But um, backtracking, like, what fan base would be worse if they won one this year? What? Because <sighs> Golden State's already won a few. They they're not as annoying as they were the fr- like especially last year with the whole cupcake thing. Harden fans, yeah, and Houston yeah, Rockets Houston fans. fans are, oh, they're gonna they they will be up and every <laughs> like they will find every IP address in Oklahoma <laughs> and tweet at that IP address. <laughs> like they're gonna find they're gonna come out of the woodworks. They're gonna be on the hunt. Yeah, I that's would, not something we need in Oklahoma yeah. City or just the entire state. We don't need that. It will also suck because you'll have the whole thing will just be brought up again about the whole trade not. Keeping oh, yeah. and oh the, god! Like that is oh, all. God. As soon as they win, that'll all come so quick. Oh, the, yeah, right and then up. like there's a new narrative that starts in like, oh, well, Russell Westbrook's the only one, only remaining guy that ha- doesn't have one. Yeah. And then if his career ends and he doesn't get one, like I changed my that mind. thirty for thirty will <laughs> change. You know, we everyone always talks about that thirty for thirty with those oh, three stars. Like that thirty th- for thirty is going to take a shift. <laughs> it's all on Russ. And now it's going to be like about Russ and like what. Yeah. How you know it's gonna be like a sad story now. We really need to win a championship soon. Oh God, how do we get down this road? <laughs> it is it is Cavs Dubs Collision Course Part Four. Pretty much, yeah. Four years in a row. If that happens, man. Ugh. At at some point, if you're Adam Silver, how do you how do you not step in and like try and do whatever you can? I just don't know what you can do. It's weird to like break up a team. Well, well, you have to kick one of them out of the league. (laughs) One of them gets kicked out, and all the players go too. But how y'all are in the G League? (laughs) How is this good? Like, uh, like obviously, like I'm a Thunder fan. I don't really care about the NBA. Like, I've got so many other sports I pay attention to. I'm watching more hockey. Like, (laughs) I, I don't really get into all this, but like I just see it from my Thunder perspective. So you guys are better like better people to ask. Is this good for the league? Is is this something like? Do you guys find this damaging? Because I, I personally do. I thought it was, but I think the the way the league's responding to it is actually really been How? interesting. Like I, like if it wasn't for the Celtics being super injured this year, I actually think this would be kind of an interesting setup right now. But I think the end is coming. Yeah, the end of this is coming. The, this year in particular is harder because like. LeBron, this might be his worst team that, that he's had in it's, a while. Yeah, and then rough. so no one's gonna give him a chance for us the worst. Now everyone also, how, how much do you want to believe that like, are the are the Rockets the Warriors' biggest challenge since the Thunder a couple of years ago? Who no one thought the Thunder were gonna be the Warriors' yeah. biggest challenge, and they ended up being. So are the Rockets gonna actually? You know, everyone's always thought that they will be the 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 Warriors' biggest challenge down the road. Are people just making things up at this point? Like. Are they mm-hmm. actually a challenge? Do people want it to just be a challenge? I, mean, I'm I think not it's g- a lot of that. Like, I'm not going to be surprised if this thing ends in five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rockets have home court, which that's something. But. If it does end in five, do, does that kind of – like if it, let's say the Rockets push it to six, does that change the narrative? Like do you think five to six games is, is kind of the breaking point in that narrative? Mm, I don't know. Do, like, I, like do the Rockets have to push it to seven to be the true like challengers? Yes. Yes. You, you think so? Okay. I yeah. think so. I think so. I, I mean, agree with that. You, you got to – they have to be close games too. Like you need a bunch of close games, you know. What, what if they lose in five but they lose by aggregate of like four total points? Well, that would be impressive. 
Well, yeah, I'm just saying, be, like, that all would be really, a good really, yeah, that would be a really good, good series. But well, let's say, like, the Rockets keep it close, kind of like the Thunder did with the Rockets last year, where it was like the Thunder were in most of those games and kind of just let it slip. And now, obviously, the and final score was final score was huge. But well, let's say they keep it close every single game. It's an entertaining series, like, like and it goes five games. Does, does that switch it a little bit, or does it absolutely have to go seven? For you to even crown the Rockets as the heir apparent to the challenge, I, I think it has to go six or seven with too. close games. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. Rockets have to get some. They have to prove that they can actually win the game. Yeah, <laughs> but your point is well taken. I understand where you're coming from. The NBA is extremely top heavy right now because the first round was okay. We had some good series. Yeah. Uh, but second round, man, it's been not good. It hasn't been a good second round. Those so. poor Raptors. All right, let's move on. We really hung on that long. <laughs> yeah, we than did. I anticipated. <laughs> The Thunder have a really interesting offseason, guys. So I'm going to get let, – let's go through the little breakdown here. Chime in when you want to because I'm going to break it down for everyone out there listening and just for us here at the table. Going into this summer, the Thunder have eight guaranteed players on the roster barring a trade or release. Guys that are going to be on the team next season. For sure. Nine if you count Mello. Russell Westbrook being the only point guard, the only guy that can handle the ball, the only guy, you know, so there's your, there's a glaring need right there. Something right? we're used to. Yeah. So, you know, Raymond Felton's a free agent. Wants to be back in Oklahoma city. We know this. Uh, that's what he said at least. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if the thunder wouldn't mind having him back. But yeah, anyways, yeah. that's beside the point. We can talk about that later on the wings. You got Andre Robertson is back. Everyone's excited about that. Alex Sabrina. So we'll be back. Kyle Singler. No one's excited about that one. Terrence Ferguson, <laughs> young guy. It'll be fun to watch him jump another year. As far as bigs go, you have Steven Adams, Patrick Patterson, and Dakari Johnson, who will be on the last year of his guaranteed deal. So that's $89 million tied up without Melo, which will be $12 million below the cap. So you have a little cap space without Melo, but you only have eight players. So, there's not, But you have a little something to do if Melo were to opt out. But with Melo, you are $16 million over the cap <laughs> instantly and $6 million below the tax. Now, that's before Paul George. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So then if you want to consider Paul George coming back, like you imagine how over the tax you're going to be. But with that being said, that doesn't, that's not the end-all, be-all, right? Mm-hmm. So even if Melo, Paul George say, you have 10 guys on the roster, you're way over the tax, the NBA, may, you know, you're able to still do some things. You'll have the mid-level exception that you can use. Uh, which the Thunder are going to be a taxpayer mid-level exception. So it's going to be like what the deal that Pat- Patrick Patterson got last mm-hmm. year, about a little over $5 million. Uh, and then you have minimum contracts. You know, the Nick Collisons, the Raymond Feltons, the, uh, what Jeremy Grant was on this year, stuff like that, which there's no money out there this summer. Yeah, six teams have money. Six teams have cap space. Yeah. So it, there's going to be a lot more minimum contracts out there, a lot more veterans seeking these min- minimum contracts. So the free agents that the Thunder have, that they have their bird rights – Meaning, you can resign them in for as much money as you want, yeah. extend or you know as the cap allows. Well, not the cap allows, but the, the NBA the, allows. Yeah, right. right. The structure, yeah. yeah. You can go over your cap to sign them. Exactly. That's that's better. Put. Which is not really a salary cap, but that's you know. That's yeah. Like, this is with semantics. Birds, but obviously, Paul George, Jeremy Grant, which is huge because yeah. the Thunder would be screwed <laughs> if he could. Nick Collison, we all expect to retire. Is that fair? I would yeah. assume so. Uh, yeah, I think so. Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and Josh Eustace, uh-huh. which I think is good because I don't think Josh Eustace is going to get. I think he's going to be a minimum guy, man. I don't man. think he's getting money from anyone sure, else. Yeah. You think so? I for would sure? agree with that. Yeah. You don't think anyone like tosses the mid level at him or anything? Maybe so. like the Magic if they're bored, and they are bored. <laughs> they might. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> they are bored, and they're bad. Yeah. <laughs> so they, um, maybe maybe they do toss their mid level at a at a young guy like that. Just to see. Then you have your free agents without bird rights, meaning you'll have to retain them on the minimums or the mid level, which would be Raymond Felton or Corey Brewer. Those are minimum guys. And or. Because you could and I, I and I think you could easily get both of them back on the minimum. Like Yes. That's what they're gonna go for. Corey Especially Brewer. Corey. Yeah, Corey Brewer is absolutely a minimum player. Yeah. Raymond Felton maybe if he's lucky, someone might toss him like the mid level exception or the biannual exception, like someone else out there, but I don't see it. Yeah. No, he's getting up there. So the Thunder situation right now, is this a bad situation that they're in, or is this? do they have something to work with here? No, this is a bad situation. No, no. <laughs> and it's only – I'll say that, but it's only for the – I only feel bad for the next season. Right. Like with that mellow – because you did all of that, which all of that's true. And then Correct. we talk about $89 <laughs> million, mm-hmm. but the fact is, is I think the – there's such a huge percentage chance 
that Melo's going to take that money. And it, yeah, and like if Melo's off the team, odds are it's because it's a buyout. Correct. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Which they, if they do buy him out, they can stretch that money over like three years, I believe, mm -hmm. which would help. But I, I think Eric Horn said he mentioned at one point he said that it would be better for them almost to just bite it off. I think that probably would, and, and, and a lot of that depends on what Paul George wants to do. Yeah, you know. So and, yeah, and like speaking of uh, stretching, like uh, stretching somebody's money out, they could do the Kyle Singler, like wave him and kind of stretch that five million out a little bit. I don't know if that would really help them that much, but the problem that the Thunder are in there is that they need guys to fill the damn roster. <laughs> right, right. And he <laughs> does have legs. <laughs> yeah, he so has that's legs, cool. But you are paying him a ridiculous salary. Yeah, but it, to, this year is the last year of it. Last year, he's gone. Hey, it's not as bad as Lou All Dang. Oh uh, my God, that's so funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's three years of eighteen million. That does is, he even go to the facility? Of he the played. Team? What What was the stat this year that he played like one game? I think. <laughs> Or something like I ridiculous. Yeah, like was, I feel like he only shows few, up. I think. I think he only shows up to the team's facility to just like eat, get a massage, <laughs> and, and then just like head back and to collect the house. his paycheck. <laughs> yeah. Oh like, no, let's be honest. He has direct deposit. He doesn't even oh, yeah. show up. What for an that. amazing paycheck too. God, what a life. For not doing anything. What is it like? Seventeen, eighteen million dollars. Eighteen. Yeah. yeah. And for like, for like a couple three, more for years, three, like three, three years, yeah. he was apparently signed to like an eleven-year deal. But I, I think <laughs> his you know, cup with, check just like, man, I really screwed you guys. With, with Mello, <laughs> and this is this is a it, you're you're kind of grasping at straws, but at least these straws are a little bit tangible. You're hoping that a team like Orlando, or or uh, just one of those bad teams that's still really young, doesn't quite have their core together, that just wants to sell some tickets, and they're like. He's a top twenty scorer all time. Why don't yeah. we just trade for that That's mellow guy <laughs> and and can just dump some assets, take on that heavy salary, and, and actually like be able to eat that for one year. Yeah, and, and then go. You know, you're gonna have like because well, let's be honest. Like we've seen Melo on bad teams. Melo on bad teams doesn't get you out of the lottery or anywhere near getting out of the lottery. Right. You, yeah. you stay in that top ten range. That's mm -hmm. a pretty sweet so deal like for them. So, like, let's say you're you're just just to use the Suns as, a, as an example. I don't I don't think they they do it, but if you're the Suns, do a little bit a little bit of uh, you know your old expiring contracts. You can you can dump those guys. You bring in a mellow, kind of eat that one. You can use some raw like use your draft picks for roster space. All that fill everything out. Have your have your like overall goal as a franchise, and then you sell some tickets to Melo, you still get a top ten pick. Yeah, I think that's a win win for the franchise. If Melo will go, there. yeah. But then Melo says no. Yeah, and that, then that is screwed. true. I forget yeah, about that no yeah. trade clause. That's the thing. Yeah. That's the big thing. And then even if he's like, whatever, I just want out of here. If he's like that, yeah, upset. Who's gonna? Does a team really <laughs> want to take him on? Like, is that good for young player development? Like you talk about the Suns, is that gonna be good for them? Like no, I don't. It just goes so. back to New I York. I wouldn't think so either. You would have to hope the organization is. A little dumb. Well, I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. We've seen Sam Presti work over fleece, if you will, some of these organizations. There are dumb we GMs thought. out there. We, yeah, yeah, we thought. The, yeah. Orlando. Well, the, the Chicago deal was pretty decent. Yeah. Orlando? And Orlando, yeah. Well, that really backfired on us. So <laughs> well, okay, well we, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. We'll we turn it into Paul George. It's fine. We'll wait until Ju July. Well, yeah, we'll wait until uh, July, and then we'll find out. Okay, so let's, let's break down the scenarios that can happen. Let's really focus. Because a lot of this offseason, right? I mean— 98% of this offseason is what's going to happen with Paul George mm, and mm. what's going to happen with Carmelo Anthony. Because depending on what happens with those two guys, that's how you figure out how you how you want to move forward. Yeah, like nothing else is going to fall into place until those two things happen. Exactly. So let's, let's do this by scenario. Scenario number one. Mm. Both of them – wait. Yeah, both of them stay. That's my first <laughs> scenario. Sorry. So PG stays, signs a max, $30 million in this first year. Melo doesn't opt out. So he stays. Which is he's an staying. important point, I think, to make about Melo is that it's not an opt in yeah. player option. He has to actually opt out of it yeah. for it to be a thing. It's guaranteed. So if he He's got that money already. Yeah, he doesn't have to call Sam Presti or his agent doesn't call Sam Presti to say, I'm opting into the contract. He can sit on his couch and not play video, shit. play Fortnite. I bet he doesn't win though. He uh, probably doesn't play though. Have you played Steven Adams yet? No, I don't. I mean, I don't think so. Well, maybe. <laughs> maybe if he hears this, maybe we could. That's true. <laughs> maybe we could squat Basically, up. Basically, Melo doesn't have to set foot. Like he, if he if you're Melo and you want that money, you're not coming within 150 miles of the state of Oklahoma. Right. Well, like for him to to opt out of this contract, it's basically like him calling them and being like, "Hey, I don't want 28 million dollars this year." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which exactly. is a terrible sentence. It, to, he to can honor. literally don't avoid think anybody will do that. all phone calls yeah. all summer and then just show up at practice or whatever 
in September or whenever and have $28 million and be on the team. Like, yep. he'll be fine. That's the scary part. Yeah, it's here. very scary. So let's say they both stay. Mm-hmm. Then you have 10 guaranteed players, the guys that I that I mentioned, Russell Westbrook, Andre Robertson, Nabrina Singler, Ferguson, the Adams, Patterson, Johnson, PG, and Mello. That's $147 million tied up. You're $46 million over the cap, $24 million over the tax, which since the, Thunder are gonna be a re- since the Thunder are going to be a repeater team, that's somewhere around $550 million. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how the math works. It's somewhere. You're no math magician. <laughs> yeah, I'm no math magician. It's, it's, it's getting a- up to a billion somewhere. So if you have this happen, how do you approach it if you're Sam Presti as far as team building goes? Do you kind of take that same approach that you took this year as saying, hey, the goal is the championship. If Melo wants to stay and he doesn't opt out and they haven't worked out a buyout, do you do you say that he's accepting this role? He's going to continue accepting the role that we were trying to put him in last year. We think we're going to be a year better, have a year's worth of chemistry under our belt, and you keep with that same attitude going forward? Or do you have to say, we got to make a deal with Melo to get him out of here, to get him out of these guys' way? Well, in this scenario, so assuming Melo is back, mm-hmm. PG is back, like, I feel like Sam Presti is going to be in that really difficult position where with those guys and you have Robertson coming back, like, you feel really so good about your good. team. Like, you're in that weird position because I would assume that that means that you get Paul George and Carmelo just for one more year mm-hmm. and you have to try and convince Paul George the next year to stay again. And so you have that one year that you really need to be good, mm-hmm. like, like we thought they needed to do this year. And so I think that's, that's such a tough spot for Presti because you want to – Put in, put the talent on the court to be able to prove to Paul George, like, we're so close. Come back. We can do this. So how do you do that? Do you kind of retain the same? I mean, because your options yeah, no, are very limited. limited. Yeah, very he doesn't limited. really have very many options unless somebody's willing, I don't think so, <laughs> to take on some of these other guys that they have that they would want to move, which is just not likely. That's but just, who are those candidates? It's not going to happen. Well, like – I mean, like when you talk about Singler. Yeah, it, I mean, that's really – that's really Or <laughs> Patterson. do you – then – yeah, well, the reason that is is because the other option is scary, too scary, right? What because do, what do you let's mean? say what those other? guys come back, and then what's he going to do? Is he going to decide, you know, like Stephen Adams? Like, at what point you have to look down that roster and see who would somebody else yeah. realistically want? Who carries want? value? Yeah, right. who who can we get rid of here to try and get something else? And like, very little. That's it. Really, is it? There's not very mm-hmm. much that you would think that somebody else would want because you're not going to get rid of Russ. And so then it you you kind of go down, and then it's just Steven Adams, right? That's that's probably the way that you have to approach if both those guys stay, talking about Paul George and Melo. You, and you have to go hard after Grant again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have mm-hmm. to do your best to retain him. You might have to just spend whatever. He's about necessary. to cost you $50 million. Oh, God. Which is crazy. You, I think you have to keep Houston. You have to – at that point, if both those guys stay, you have to build on cohesion. Yeah. You have to say, let's hope just, this works out. Let's hope yeah. we catch – you know, these guys start working out a little bit and tell and Melo, so. like, hey, you don't have to come off the bench, but that 25 minute thing that you saw in the playoffs, that's sticking around. And you also have to come off the bench. And also, if you can <laughs> come off the bench, that'd be great. I, I think you, you build on cohesion and then you just kind of hope. And then, I, I think this is something that, you know, in all these scenarios, is I, I think that's something that the Thunder need to approach this offseason with is, is any way you can get other shooters. Any way you can bring some sort of outside shooting guys that will just knock down shots, like that has to be your ultimate goal. And I, I don't think there are a whole lot out there. Like mm. a Marco Bellinelli, yeah, if you can but get him. Anything you can find, a guy that, that has a pulse, two legs, two <laughs> arms, and hits a shot. Ian Clark. Kyle that's Singer. what you have to look at. Because that, that's the way the NBA is going. Joe Harris. It was very obvious that Russ and this team needed more floor spacing. It got better from last year. Nick Young. But they needed more oh. foot. Oh, not Nick Young. Swaggy. So dude. after what just happened, like this. I just kept in between your sentences. Yeah, I you just kept just... saying names. <laughs> <laughs> after what just happened with this season, though, who's going to be like, yeah, those guys are going to be. So the same team's coming back. <laughs> yeah, those guys are real close. I'll go. Let me go over there I mean, and just put them see. over the top. I mean, yeah. I, it would have to be a veteran that, would, sure, that thinks yeah. that they can really help. Right. They're like, I can help that team. But we also saw, like, whenever the trade deadline was coming, like, those guys had, like, Bellinelli, for instance. Mm -hmm. Like, that was somebody who actually said where he, like, he had a choice. I mean, he was, like, deciding. He could have picked us. He was deciding, like, he wanted to go to Philadelphia. Like, Mm -hmm. that was where he wanted, like. And it's worked out pretty well for him. It has. And so, I don't know, like, how does, like, now it's just one name you you had said. But, Mm -hmm. like, guys like that, like, 
I don't know. Why would they want to come and yeah. be a part of it is my question. Well, and maybe that's just so do how the mean, season ended and I'm just really still depressed. But, <laughs> but, but I mean, that same taste is going to be in those guys' mouth. Yeah, maybe. absolutely. Most, yeah, I most people. I mean, I guess time heals stuff, right? So as the summer goes on, maybe you start to forget about it a little bit. And, we start to think uh, Mello's coming back. And you do look Hootie at Mello, it. Hootie Mello, baby. <laughs> well, you do look at it and you say, well, the Thunder were the four seed. I mean, yeah. they do have good players if Paul George were to stay. If Russell Westbrook, obviously, he's going to be around. Maybe if Carmelo is staying, you know, it, the way conversations went, you would have to think that he's staying because he's willing to continue to work at something where he will be a useful player. And uh, the Thun- and both yeah, him and the Thunder will kind of get along and be successful together. Like It would be obnoxious if he stayed and they both stayed the same where they was like, I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. And they were like, yeah, you got to do that. Like I don't think that's – they would definitely try to reach a buyout, even if they had to pay. And do you think Carmelo would want to waste a whole season? Yeah, his like last just season basically of- saying, like for me, Carmelo, even though you're going to get all that money, oh. and that's incentive enough to 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 stay here and kind of do whatever you want to do. But like, he's at the point in his career where it's like, okay, do you want to change the narrative of your career? Like, especially mm-hmm. in you know these last whatever years where you can't get out of the first round. Like you have to want to change that. I think yep. just as yeah. a competitive person. And so I, I think you would have, even though you can get that much money, you still have to say, okay, maybe this is best for the team. Maybe I need to try and really buy in this year, but I'm totally with you. Like that's, that's what needs to be said to him. And that's what needs to go through his brain. But we talked about it a lot, a lot last podcast that it seems like he's just not willing to accept mm. that that's what needs <laughs> to be done. And maybe it's a little fear involved. If it's a little fear of if I do accept that, what if I fail? What if I fail and then I'm just really done? Like then I'm just yeah. What am I? I'm at that irrelevant point? at that point. Uh, yeah, that's a great point. So that's the scary part there, and be, because you know it's not as easy as Melo opting or not opting in, Melo not opting out, staying. So Melo sticking around and saying, "Well, you're coming off the bench. Sorry, nothing you can do." Like yeah, you can do that, but how's that going to go in the locker room? How's that going to go in the organization? Yeah. That's a, that sounds like a poisonous environment. Oh, he's he's going to complain every day. Yeah, but aren't you? Isn't that a double edged sword though? Like it didn't work out. Like that was the. I don't want to say Mello was the whole problem, but that was a big issue that they had. So you kind of think that you, if that if that situation comes to that, you just have to do That's it. That's what I'm saying. It? It's like a double edged sword because, like you said, in the locker room, he is going to have an influence on, especially younger guys. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. there, and and just his attitude and everything is going to bring everybody else down. I think, but then. Like you, so you don't want to do that, but also you don't want him to play mm-hmm. to start and play thirty-five minutes a game or whatever mm-hmm. it was because that didn't work. So I don't know. Hopefully, there's a balance. Like you just have to. If that's if if scenario one happens, they're both they both come back, especially Melo. You just have to sit him down and you have to get on this. Like what Jason, said, you have to get on the same page. Yeah, and may and maybe at this point too, in another year. Billy Donovan feels more confident in the way he can handle him. Maybe he's like, you know what? It's year two and I'm going to do things a little more with a, with a strong fist, you know, I don't know. A Iron strong, fist. Iron fist. A strong that fist. That seems like the least likely scenario to me is that Billy Donovan's <laughs> going to finally be like, okay, you got to sit, it, bud. What if he pulls out one of his mob mobster weapons? Threatens him. <laughs> just a, is that just a bat? It's a bat. Right? It's, it's, a bat. It's, a bat. it's a bat. It's a bat with one nail in it. Okay. Oh, just the so, one. Well, he says, I'll flip it. I'll flip it with the inside with the nail. I'll hit you with the top so part. So in this situation, in this situation where you have both of these guys staying, do you think Thunder ownership are willing to go use that mid-level exception that is five and a half million dollars or somewhere around there that, given the tax, is going to end up being somewhere around a ridiculous amount of money? Or is this going to be a team that is like we've seen in the past where they've been, I don't want to say cheap, but they don't want to kind of just spend money to spend money. You know what I mean? Or, like, they I mean, might, they might sign Daniel Hamilton and a, yeah. a, a, like PJ Dozier, the guys that were on two ways, like young guys, they, they yeah. would want to stay with the young guys. They won't play or make a, a difference. Bringing well, yeah. in a veteran that would cost. Yeah, no, right. I agree. Like you would probably want to do that. It, that's how I think that they would want to handle it. They with the go the cheap route, go the, the cheaper young, route. Yeah. I mean, if you don't think like if they're feeling not so good about mellow and he's going to have to stay, and you're not going to buy him out, then, and you're feeling like there's going to be tension and like not so greatness, then yeah, bring in some as cheap as you can get it the rest the rest of the way. But I do wonder if the Cavs situation, like, impacts the Thunder, you know, management or the Thunder uh, like the owners office. at all. Yeah. What do you mean? Well, just the fact that they put so much money into it and it worked out for mm-hmm. them. They got the championship. 
as unlikely as it seemed that it would happen. You know, the Warriors, an incredible regular season, Mm -hmm. and the Cavs actually made that happen. Obviously, they had LeBron James, but I still wonder. Like, you look at the Cavs now, and and you look at how much money they put into it and how Mm -hmm. bad it looked, Mm -hmm. that could 100% be the Thunder this next year. And you don't have LeBron (laughs) James. Right, and you you don't have LeBron, and you didn't win the championship. Go. Yeah. That's well, before great. we get to scenario two. So, uh, like we told you guys at the top, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about tonight's podcast being brought to you by our sponsor, Wellness Perspective. Yeah, Wellness Perspective teams up with local businesses all around Oklahoma City and Edmond to provide you with killer discounts and just generally helps you to live a happy and healthful life. Get healthy. We mentioned their newest partner last week, Innovative Eye Care in Edmond. We also mentioned that Wellness Perspective members get 20% off comprehensive eye exams and OptiMap Imaging. Mm -hmm. Say what now? Well, I'll tell you about that. Okay, tell me. OptiMap Imaging is a digital image of your retina that produces a more comprehensive view than dilation, and you don't have to wear those big black glasses after your eyes get dilated, and that sucks because... You know, you can't, like, take them off and you're blinded and stuff. I did it once when I was, like, in fifth grade. I honestly kind of like those glasses, but it does, <laughs> it does sound like a neat technology. Mm. Innovative eye care is also ideal for, for those of you that do not have eye insurance because, honestly, I didn't even know eye insurance was a thing. So they will absolutely <laughs> work with you if you uh, don't have that insurance. So you can check out all of Wellness Perspective's partners over at MyWellnessPerspective.com. Wellness Perspective, $7.97 a month. Discounts go now. Yeah. Yes. All right, so scenario two, we already covered if both PG and Mello stay. Scenario two, we're also having PG stay. We're getting to the depressing stuff later for the max, obviously. Hmm. But Mello opts out. Mm, then you have nine players at $119 million. You're $18 million over the cap. You're $4 million below the tax. You're still, I mean, in any, of these, in any of these scenarios, you're not going to be in a great financial situation. No. But is this the best case scenario? <laughs> Yes. Oh, by far. Yeah. Yes. If <laughs> yeah. Mello decides, I don't want $28 million, then yeah. that'd be great. It so. also seems like the least likely scenario. Mm, very not. Yeah. I'm holding yeah. out hope. Best I case like scenario is the least likely scenario. That's that's not good. It's usually not a good sign. Yeah, it's probably best to hope for somewhere in the middle. It would be absolutely idiotic for Mello to opt out. It, well, it, from a personal standpoint i mean financially yes yes the guy has made a ton of money and it probably does not every single it. person wants to make more money mm-hmm. but do you so, ever not need 28 million dollars no, no, that's what i'm saying yeah. like but he also like part of this could be bigger than finances right because mm-hmm. you could just want like you said on the last one like maybe he just wants to change the narrative of his career so what if what if the rockets are like yeah well, we could that would work with mm-hmm. us. Like, let's see what what Mello could do here. We think that you know he can add something. Just like once they get their asses kicked. Yeah, and so maybe they're like, yeah, we just need Mello. So if they do buy out, let's say they do buy out Mello, and then you do get or this one, I guess he just opts out of right. that money. Buy out, you'll have more. You'll have more. But we can go with that too. I mean, you're gonna have more on the cap because that buyout's gonna go against your cap. But it really doesn't make a it's difference. It's not gonna at be so point. much. Yeah. It really doesn't make a difference. But let's say that is there that that is something that could happen. That somebody, like you know, and he does have a you know, obviously Chris Paul could help with that. And he's like, just come here. We can use you. We like let's we'll we can make this work. Flex the money mm-hmm. around. To me, the only scenario that we're talking about where there is a chance that Melo could, could either opt out, which doesn't seem as likely, or agree to a buyout. I wonder if you want to just kind of keep a hard head as the Thunder here and just as Presty and just say. We're not buying you out, and we want you to keep doing what you did last year. If not, <laughs> if not, we you're gonna come off the bench. We think you're gonna be better suited for that bench role for that six man spot for us. Like, what if you do that and you just kind of play chicken with Mello? And is that too dangerous? Like because force, he, him, force him to opt out. I mean, ugh. it doesn't seem like the way it would go down. It's a risk, but you've already taken enough. I think what, at minimum, now? I think at minimum, Mello is gonna want the buyout. Like if I'm gonna if yeah, if, if I if you're not gonna give me under the table buyout, it, <laughs> however they need to do it, be a gigantic briefcase of one dollar bills. <laughs> yeah, and so I, I, that's kind of that's what you can really hope for as a Thunder fan with this team because even as you said with this scenario, like with Melo just opting out, the Thunder are still like you said nine players, 119 million dollars. Like that's still, you know, you're still not feeling great, mm-hmm. but. But you got PG. I, at least and I no feel mill. like 
yeah, you at least can do a little bit with like what the Thunder free agents that we had talked about that you at least have a ch- you would feel like you have a chance going. You, you might know. be more yeah. willing to pay Jeremy Grant yeah. more money. We have a question here on a, a Twitter question from Stephen Adams for MVP at Kid Clutch Zero on a scale of one to ten. How worried are you about losing Jeremy Grant this offseason? I would say very worried. Mm, really? So how much do you think he's he's going to warrant in the, on the market? That, that's guys like Jeremy Grant are so tough mm-hmm. with that because you guys said six teams realistically have money that they can spend. Some like, of them I lots think of it. Jeremy Grant could work on just about any team in the league. Like he has a skill set. That doesn't require a whole doesn't require the ball a lot can really do a lot of things and is getting like we've seen the progression so I think right. Jeremy Grant could get quite a could get pretty good money but I do think that if not a lot of teams have money to spend you could also be looking at a guy that's not going to get paid as much as he probably should he strikes me as a guy I'm, the way the NBA is moving it seems hard for anyone it, it's hard for me to see anyone throwing a bunch of cash his way yeah well. Well, like the problem with me on He's a that blue is, guy. I mean, you've got like Will Barton's going to be a free agent. Well, he also doesn't hit threes consistently. Exactly. Yeah. That's the biggest that's, issue. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like so being his, he can't really shoot the ball. I mean, yeah, he's so versatile, especially defensively and just positionally. But offensively, he's kind of, he's one dimensional, right? He's getting better. Though. He's getting better. That's for the sure. thing. Definitely I think that we saw like, especially later on in the year where we saw like national media guys that were actually like picking that up to say, yeah. holy cow, look at some of the stuff that he's able to do. I just wonder if a team would be willing to throw money at Jeremy Grant because he's not really a guy you throw money at thinking that we might catch something here. He might just all of a sudden turn into a really good player. No, yeah. I because there's a ceiling there. So like they might be more inclined to throw it at a guy that can already shoot the ball really well and say, well, maybe this guy can really develop – and, you know, that's number one in this league right now is if you can shoot the ball. Speech. Right. And I, I think a big thing. So if you look at like a couple of years ago where free agency was like people hitting the lottery, like Alan Crabb got like. Right. Yeah, that was a, almost a max. Contract. I mean, Alan Crabb this year, if he was in the same situation, he's probably like a mid level. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's so crazy. So I think teams are going to see that the ones that even do have money. I think they're going to see that. And they're probably not just throwing money, like you said. Like they're probably not throwing money to a guy that's not completely proven. Like you can't shoot. Mm-hmm. Eh, I don't know. Yeah. Like yeah, he's a really good player. And are but, you just thriving in the Thunder system, which doesn't really seem like a system? Right. But I. But I mean, I see a guy like Will Barton. Um, I mean, there are a couple other guys like Ian Clark might get paid a little bit. Like he looks pretty good. Um, I, I think there's just some guys above him to where those other teams that have money were probably gonna. Put, like there's not a ton of guys, but. They're probably going to put it in somebody more proven like that. And then you're kind of like, who else is left? I but. really think Jeremy Grant could end up on a, on a really good team rather than a bad team. Like, I feel That's like, possible, yeah. I feel like he's a guy, like you were saying, like, Brandon, like a glue guy that, that really like, it's just low maintenance and mm-hmm. he, he can do, he can do a, a lot of stuff. He, he's limited. He can't shoot threes. There's just not a lot of good teams with cap space. Yeah. And so that's Philly. Yeah, like yeah. Philly and Indiana have cap. But why would Philly space? go back after the guy that they traded? No, I don't think that I don't think that they would. But yeah. I do think what Jason said, like if the Pacers wanted somebody like, I mean, like mm-hmm. that seems that's like a he, good. Fit. He would be a great fit on the. That's Pacers. a good yeah. fit. I haven't he, thought about that. That's depressing. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm depressed. Yeah. <laughs> that seems like too good of a fit. Sorry about you. I mean, but Brooklyn has money. He seems like. I mean, if you you know Patrick Patterson got the Thunder's mid level exception last year. Jeremy Grant seems like in the number one slot for that this year. For sure. Like yeah. you ha- like he is in your first spot for that. That's what you got to hope for. You have to hope yeah, for Yeah, and I, I'd probably put myself around four and a half of worried. Um, I think I'm lower mostly because Presti made me feel like he's pretty aggressive. Like he's going to be pretty aggressive in trying to keep him. I mean, we do have his bird rights. So that's another pretty solid mm-hmm. thing for us. Yeah, um, that's that's where if a team did come in – and you know Jeremy's got an offer floating out there for nine million a year or whatever, yeah, and like, the Thunder hey, are like, man, this is gonna be like forty million a year for yeah. us, but <laughs> for at least this year it's gonna yeah. be really expensive. But let's do it. You know, we got to keep this guy. At, at least ownership has has been so committed to saving a bunch of money in the early years, right? That they can just like, okay, it's just one more year. We'll bite the bullet. Mm-hmm. Jeremy Grant's fun to watch. Let's pay him some money. Yeah. But I, then the, the thing to me though is like, you don't want to like. Say PG like is coming back and you have to deal with the whole mellow thing and it's going to be kind of shitty this year. 
I don't think they do want to get too far in the tax right. this year. If you're going to have a team with just like Russ, PG, and Adams on it next year, like the following year, that would be kind of the time I would want to spend a lot of money. So do you think, though, like if, if – but I don't know if you can. Everyone was so excited about this team th- this past year, you know, and, and things didn't really work out how everyone wanted them to work out. And so do you think that that just means going into next year, if you have much of the same squad that you're just, I mean, that all, you're more pessimistic than you were going into last year because you saw you had a year to watch it? Or are you like, you know what? We had a year to work on it. Right. Or do you and you a- have a year of film of like, this is where we sucked. Like we should not do this anymore. Mello standing over there. Why do we keep coming back to Mello? <laughs> is that what it all is on, though? That That's what all this is on? No. No, it's not all it's on not Mello. All. But I put a large amount of it on. Well, I put a large amount on <laughs> Billy Donovan. Yeah. Like, yeah. not figuring out no. how to use these guys better. And the fact that he's coming back next year. Like, I think that that's a big, that's a big thing that this team is going to have to work through as well is to figure out how to play together on the court. And Billy Donovan is going to be a big part of that. So, so Rob, well, let's say you got the chance to go back to September and, and change this entire season, but you only one guy gets to go either mellow or Billy Donovan. Do you think it's more effective to not have mellow or more yeah, effective? To definitely. Not have... Yeah. So, so yeah. That, that's kind Mello. of the thing is, is that that's the problem. Well, he's a great guy. He's, yeah. a great guy. he's a great guy. He is a great guy. You're right about that. Such a good guy, man. He's so good. But what happens like if you you know in this scenario PG stays mellow ops out, and it's just the same. Then it then we're like oh, no. Billy. <laughs> Everyone just points their finger. Yeah, he, he would become the next scape- scapegoat. Oh, it also be at that point like it has to eventually like I think we kind of saw the tide turn a little bit on Presty, but like if it doesn't work out next year, like it's going to be bad for Presty. I think like you're yeah. eventually it's going to completely turn on him. Well, before we move to scenario number three, we did have a question from Nathan Cates at – what is that? Nat and Nate. Nat, 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 Nate, Nat and Nate 77. 77. If OKC buys out Mello, will they be willing to spend any more money next year on free agents, not counting Paul George, Grant, or possibly a Brewer re-signing? Or do they tempt next season with the same team? Well, you have to fill out the roster. You have to have at least 13 going into the season. Mm-hmm. And so in that situation, if you buy out Mello, you're sitting at nine, but you get Grant. So you get Grant, you're 10 – Say you can get Brewer or Felton, you're sitting at 11. I wouldn't be surprised if you re or if you sign Daniel Hamilton, you bring him up to the yeah roster. Maybe or Dozier. Like I think it's a good fit. Yeah, and it's someone to sit at you're, your end of your, end of your bench and learn. And, and then I get you'll be able to bring in a veteran on. Yeah, the and you're kind of like leaning on Ferguson as that backup shoot. Like well, I guess the Brinus and Ferguson duo again, but that would be. I, I think you can put a lot of faith in a Brinus coming in healthy for a full season. Yeah. Shooting better, kind of spacing the floor better for you. Terrence Ferguson, having learned, players always shoot better throughout their career. For well, not always, but for the most part, their their, their shooting trends upwards. Right. I, I think it trended upwards that, as the season went. That's, that's true. And, and like I, limited minutes. I, I liked what I saw from Daniel Hamilton. He's really raw, but uh, as a guy that's your third point guard on your bench, or a third but point you, guard overall, like I can. You got to do something. You got to do something about that uh, small forward backup position don't you definitely yeah. because yeah. it's kyle singler and <laughs> paul george if he stays well i mean i guess you could you can play ferguson there yeah but he could be undersized in a lot of matchups. but also that could be the veteran that you you bring right, in yeah. could be right. somebody and like and, like and enough, sometimes flawless, defensively which i don't like at all and that can be grant that can be houston too you know those defensively that's true, at that's least. true. if you if you're able to retain Houston but i will say $0. maybe it's delusion but mm. I, if if you're gonna give me paul george you're gonna tell me Melo off shot. I like that team on paper. Like yeah, I will same. still. 100%. Whenever we go into the season, mate, like we just came off of this, and that's a really big difference. Though, if you're going to tell me Melo's not there, that's a huge difference. Huge, I agree, huge and that's that's one of those teams that I'm like, yeah, bring back the same team. You have a different right. starting power forward, whether it's Grant or whether it's Patterson Patrick or Patterson. W- whatever it might be, and then bring in one veteran on that mid level exception or something, a guy that can help. You know whether it's off your bench or yeah, what stabilizing that bench with that with somebody like a that. guy that can shoot. Yes, so you're someone that could it. score. That would be really cool. It's gonna take the mellow role, except the way the mellow role should be taken. Uh-huh. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Next scenario. Scenario three. Paul George leaves. Oh no! This gets so. This sad. is the most likely scenario, I would say. Shit. And Mello stays. Yeah. Nine players, 117 million dollars. You're 16 million over the cap in. Your two best scores are Russell Westbrook and Carmelo Anthony. Ooh. You're only six million below the tax of that. 
at that point. This is the most likely scenario, right? Oh, rough. Just the way your mother likes it. I'll do slightly, yeah. Mm, so, yeah. what are our expectations in this scenario? None. Your starting, <laughs> your starting lineup is, you know, as of now, is going to be Russ, Robertson, uh, probably a Brinus. Um, mm. You're not going to just... This is give a, Mello what he wants and slide him back to the this three. This is a no. This is a borderline playoff, like missing the playoff team right there. Borderline. Like, <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I think the... with the way that the and who knows, you know, really what's going to happen with some of those other teams in the West. But you know, if you look how good the West was this year, that team doesn't. Like, if you take Paul George off that team, that team doesn't make the playoffs. I don't think. That's why I'm wow questioning the borderline this. I feel like it's That's scary, not man. Good. But it's it's hard to really like calculate how much chemistry goes into it because and if I mean if if we thought like PG and Russ together and Melo on the floor like they got in each other's way maybe if I mean Melo maybe Melo's a smidge better I, I bet, bet, Mello, I bet Mello is better I bet Melo is better in that situation uh, but I still don't think I don't he's, think it's good enough yeah I still don't think he's like a super positive player heck no I don't even <laughs> think it's a I don't think he's better I don't I don't really? think he's better. I, I think that he has a little more room to work with. He has less on his mind, as does Russell Westbrook have less on his mind. That's the only reason. But that's a problem also, in itself. Well, yeah. he also has more pressure in that scenario as well. Because can you imagine if he missed – Russ took a, a worse team to the playoffs just two years ago, mm -hmm. and then now you're with Russ <laughs> and, and you guys can't it. get it at all, and you don't even make the playoffs? Oh, mm -hmm. God. So what happens? I mean, this is – like we said, Rob, you, you – you set the odds. That's slightly the favorite to happen. Mello stays, PG leaves. I don't like it. Things could get dirty here, man. Oh yeah, you could be looking at. We might be in the lottery though. Upside, silver lining. You could be. I I think a hundred percent trades are definitely in play at that Ooh, point. So you're no. talking trades at the top, maybe. You're yeah, talking Stephen yeah. Adams, Robertson, maybe even Westbrook. I don't think it's Russ. So you don't. You think in no situation. Yeah, like if if you keep that team and they're struggling off the gates, you're halfway through the year. You're whatever. Let's just say you're twenty and twenty, and I mean, there's not much optimism from this team like there was this year. Yeah, yeah, that you know, optimism like, gone at that point. Yeah, it's gone. So Russ isn't happy. Melo's only happy because he got twenty eight million in his pocket. Steven Adams, he'll be fine. But I I just wonder, like, it, do like you, where where do things go with that in that? Scenario. I think that's you where might you might be in the lottery, so hopefully you can hit a pick. But I think that's where you take the paper of Melo's trade exception, you wad it up, and you eat it, mm. and then you just <laughs> trade his ass. Never existed. Well, Didn't he might happen. that's where he might accept a trade, but who wants this $28 million contract? But in that situation, maybe with no teams LeBron having James. cap space, they're like, hey, we're bad. Let's take on Melo's contract. We're going to lose that off the books next year. Yeah. I do like the idea of NBA offices only having paper copies. <laughs> yes. There's nothing <laughs> electronic <laughs> there. And it, like, he came with it in his briefcase when he got off the plane. He was like, here's my trade exception. Wait, I, I had this. Where'd it go? <laughs> so is it more likely in that scenario that Sam Presti decides, we're going to get through this year. Mello will be off the books. I still want to have Adams, Robertson, and mm -hmm. Russ going forward after this year. Rather than I would at just least having try to keep Russ those. and probably, you know, either Robertson or Adams, most likely Robertson, and just kind of, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens going forward. And I still think we can get free agents here. And that's what, you know, that's how he's going to go. You think that that's the yeah. best case scenario? Some or on that lottery? Or is it yeah. just you get rid of Adams and you just, I don't know. I don't know what that solves, really. I think that's probably how you go forward. Mm. But that's scary because then. You know, once Melo's off the books, you create a lot of cap space, and you can probably wiggle wiggle things around and create enough cap space to sign another max player uh, in the future. You might have to get rid of Robertson or something, though. Yeah. Or, or something like that. But Ooh. what happens if you don't? Then Westbrook's, you know, got two years left on his deal. His value's diminished like crazy. You know, he's 32 Prime, or whatever. Him. Yeah. So you're like, man, we should have traded him two years ago if we were going to end up trading him anyways. Yeah. Then you could have got a nice little package. But can't. But even now, can you? How nice of a package could you get for us? I mean, uh, you could probably get a yes. pretty good package, obviously, but not what we think his value is to Oklahoma City. Sure. Not yeah. that. I mean, yet. you'd yeah. you'd have to hope for like a a younger player that's like getting decent, but getting decent. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not that's good. What we're hoping for. Yeah, but getting oh, decent, shit, that doesn't that, sound that good. That phrasing is we sound terrible. Like the, we sound like the Phoenix Suns at that point. I like, actually was thinking I, maybe I, I think, Devin. I think, bring Melo back. We're not trading Devin Booker. <laughs> I, I, no really, I really do kind of buy into the scenario where you just you go with, you stick it with, it's Russ, 
Adams, Robertson, everyone else is for sale. You buy out Melo. You get a bunch of guys that are 30, 32 or older. Maybe just start. Just run, like, just run through, like, just just a kind of geriatric team. Can you yeah. just start going out to, like, Rucker Park and finding guys Basically, that can shoot yeah. and be like, but and, and you you're just, on the you team. just anything that moves that's not those four guys like you just you trade everything. Yeah, but how do you sell you that to Russ? That's how the, do you sell it to Russ? And then once Russ's time is over, you're screwed. You don't. Yeah, you're screwed. You well, because you have the worst team in NBA it. history. Well, but Russ is <laughs> yes. going to be happy with that. No, he's not. But you just do it because you have to. Ugh. That doesn't it, sound great. I mean, once this happens, it's <sighs> going to be interesting to see what direction they go. Now, I, I absolutely think if Melo, you know. If he stays, Paul George leaves, you have another year with Melo, you get past that year, and you just have Robertson, you just have Russ, you just have Adams, then you have Abrinas, who's another year better. You have Terrence Ferguson, who's another year. Like, that team can make the playoffs, I think. I think that team could make – I mean, it's kind of what made the playoffs last year, right? Yeah. Yeah, but other teams got a whole bunch better, though. That's well, point. and yeah, they but did. That, but yeah, but we're talking. I mean, the, who knows? Yeah, like I mean, it point. could all change. It, we it, could be in the it East could happen. At that point. But but your pro- <laughs> but it's very unlikely that you are a second round team, right? No, no. way. So yeah. that I mean, unless you just uh-uh. somehow strike gold on a second round pick that you just yeah. nail, which the Thunder don't seem not to have much great. evidence of doing anything like that. Which a lot of teams don't. I'm not Bring saying us. that the Thunder are about it. Yeah, he's not he's totally striking gold though. <laughs> yeah, it's more like striking. Uh, like nickel or you know, bronze. bronze. So yeah. in in this Copper. most likely scenario Copper's that we've expensive. deemed it, give me a yes no on the following free agents. Mm. On retaining them, Grant. Yes. Yeah. Everyone's a yes. Yeah, I would be a yes. Mm-hmm. So going forward, you're like, let's have this guy be a part of this yeah. team for years to come. Houston. No. Mm-mm. Felton. Nope. Brewer. No. So just Grant, mm. and then look because back. they're not going to want to take. Uh, why would you take on? that that money at that point i think obviously you want to fill out well, the you, roster yeah you but, gotta fill out the roster yeah but those i mean and you're but, 16 million over the cap this is still three right yes but, yeah but i mean you're not at the tax yet so you could have you'd have a little bit of money to yeah play I, with well uh, barely yeah. well for that's, this that's year, why you I, wouldn't have any money to play with yeah that's what we were talking about right yes i thought that's what we were talking yeah, about. yeah that is what we're talking about so yeah, that you, like i mean i almost feel like you would want to retain one of those houston feltner brewers to just fill out a spot and not have to pay any money for but in it. The, but don't you approach it this year? Like, so if you lose Paul George and you just have Melo coming back, you approach it for everything after this year. Yeah, for yep. sure. Right? I mean, even if you keep... So you kind of spend the money... Other than Grant, even if you keep any of those guys, you're not going to want to... You're not signing them to mm. anything it's like a further one, than that one-year year. deal. Yeah. Mm. So you might want to bring in shooters, guys that are going to... You know, guys that are going to be more adept to this the NBA right now that are going to help Russell Westbrook out shooting the ball a little yeah. more. Because well, you're he's going to it's the ball's going to be in his hands something. as much as it has been. Well, I also think like if you're going to just sign guys to fill out the roster, let's not let's let's try and find somebody younger that you know Thank maybe you. you can develop rather than hanging on to Felton and Brewer. Yeah, I think that's Definitely. right. I mean, those guys are guys you want on your team when you're a veteran team as is, yeah. and you feel like you have a chance. Right. Maybe maybe Brewer is a little bit different because of the way that he does get up and run with with Russ, but Felton at that point I don't think at all. All right, scenario yeah. number four, both leave. Paul George leaves. Mello opts out because Paul, he knows Paul George is leaving. He's like, I'm going. Nope. <laughs> wow, you wanted Mello more. <laughs> you, I actually you feel like this is better than the last one. <laughs> so then you have eight players. It's just so much sadness. Guaranteed, and you're actually twelve million below the cap. Yeah, the sadness part about this is that. The Russ, uh, no one wants to play with him storyline is that's most fired that's right back up. Yeah, but this was also part of the Presti plan, right? Because you mm-hmm. you would hope. I mean, th- this was the risk. That's the point that you want to get to because you felt like Oladipo and Sabonis, you you weren't going to get there with them. And Oops. to Brandon's point, what you said, I don't know if it was last pod, the fact that you you have a chance at Paul George this mm-hmm. this off season, yeah. even if it is you know, 15%, like you still have that chance. But this is the point that Presti really wants to get to. If Paul George is going to leave, Melo is going to be gone after this next year anyways. Like, mm-hmm. But if both of them are gone this next year. It's actually not so bad. Yeah, that's the position that you kind of want to be in because you have options there. Yeah, you so, want this one much more than three because, I mean, like you're, like you're saying, the risk was like, okay, we'll bring PG here. And but if he doesn't stay, we kind of get that money back. Right. So we're we're not so bad. Yeah. And, and this could go different ways. It, if Melo were to opt out, which no one's expecting, you have cap. If he doesn't opt out and you have to buy him out, you don't have cap, and you're playing this year with that team, 
Mm. And the minimums you sign probably aren't aren't veteran minimums. But I still your think, team's gonna suck. Well, I still think you're in a better position than you are <laughs> than if Melo was here, though. Yeah. Because at least probably, you would yeah. have, like, let's say you do, you bring back, you know, Grant or you know, in Houston, like. I don't think that those guys are just going to flip the switch and be incredible, but let's see if maybe they can continue to develop. Who knows? So how do you go forward there? Like, I mean, because if you don't have Paul George going forward and, and we've already talked about Mello, no, we don't expect the Thunder to have Mello going forward anyways beyond next year. Do you, obviously you want to keep Jeremy Grant, but do you try to keep these younger guys, Grant, uh, Houston, to build around Russ? Or do you keep them, to trade for trade assets because at that point you're out of assets, man. Well, and mm. I also don't, I mean, the, you have a Brenus and I don't Ferguson, think but as much of an asset, the scary part is, is I think that we like the junk more than other teams are going to like it. And so, Oh yeah. You know, how much is it? But how often have we said that? And then Presley trades him, and we're like, wow, I can't believe he got that for that. Yeah. No, that's, well, that's it, true. It, it's I mean, happened before, right? Yeah. I'm not saying it, it. It's not possible, but it still is. It's Eustis this time, though. Yeah, it's still wor. I mean, that's worrisome. I, I don't know. You just can't really. That's not something you can like bank on, and that's the bad part. Yeah, it's just it's scary to think about losing these guys, and then Russ is right back where he started after Kevin Durant left, and that's what I. That's what I. Yeah, worry I mean, that's kind of where you're. It almost. I mean, you have a better Adams, I guess, and a better Dre. But yeah. but those or, aren't scores. No, who well, scores the ball? Yeah. Russell Westbrook. But for Russ, yeah. to me, that's a more fun team to play with uh-huh. than one that has Mellow on it and no Paul George. He enjoyed it more. That's mm. for sure. For, I think that Russ would have more fun there rather than having than Mellow. Having just feed Paul, uh, I just Mello think, in the post. <laughs> I just think it like feel would feel a little bit heavy. Well. Like come out, but I, I think it would. Be, fun. I just think it would like it would be something he would have to think about rather than just running it however he wants to. Like he would have to consider what, me- and he probably wouldn't consider, but like he would probably have to consider like Melo's over there. Let me try and work through this. Oh, uh, Melo's gonna be down here in about four minutes. <laughs> yeah, you just you you good yet? <laughs> it's a scary. It's a scary. It's scary to think about. I mean, we're gonna. This is a crazy summer, man. It's a, and it's really all gonna start with what Paul George does, mm-hmm. and that's scary to me because I've told you guys that I do not feel confident. In so him strongly, and so that makes me feel like the future of the Thunder is super bleak. But if you have that, if you have the immediate future, I should say, yeah, laying it out like that, huh? <laughs> if you do have, Blue, if you do right. have Melo come back and Paul George leaves, like at least expectations are out of the window, and maybe, maybe you get lucky and someone makes a huge jump. Mello makes a jump in his career. He becomes good again. Uh-huh. Mello comes out. He's like 20 pounds lighter. He's moving well. He, he goes and works out with Vic's trainer. So uh, I do have to go back because scenarios three and four kind of reinforce this of what I said last offseason. I would hate if the Thunder kind of traded the house for a guy like, for example, Paul George. You did say that. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he did say that. And kind of and, and sold themselves out on the future. You mean as if they would trade? I don't see it that way. Victor though. and I see it setting up the future better yeah. than. Uh, I I just I, I would have rather like the the guys that we had at the time I, I think would it, at least that's an enemy you know versus one that you don't you you no, that's don't true. know what you don't know what the future holds you don't know what these draft picks are you don't know what these future free agents are that's that's, that's just, scary that's, and and you're only, you're playing with such a limited time with Russell Westbrook mm-hmm. it, it's hard to gamble with that. True, it's just real you, hard to not take the risk on somebody well, like yeah, Paul George. But you also don't I agree. Get, you also don't get that old depot. Maybe you get that Sabonis. No. Maybe yeah. you never get that old depot. That yeah. old depot never exists. I mean, he would have been better for I, sure. But. Yeah, I I don't think that he's what he was this year. But I mean, he would have been a lot. He better. He would have been a lot better. Yeah. He, I mean, he did, guys, he did all that working out and all that stuff before we. He was him. ready. Yeah. Guy's yeah. a lot better player right now than he was yeah. at, as a Thunder. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, and but. It really becomes how much of that is because he's not in the shadow of Russ. Yeah, he gets he's like his own, doing his. He gets control. Doing his, his own his thing. His usage was so so up this year. Like he, it's hard to compare the two. Hmm. Well, let's. Uh, I, I was planning on talking about free agents, but what if we save that? Okay. We've already gone way over on these things, and it's been a really good conversation. Agreed. So let's save when we're talking about the Thunder free agents. When we talk about Grant Houston, Felton, Brewer, Carlson, and then we talk about outside free agents. We, t- we mentioned earlier the point guard, the backup point guard, is probably the most glaring. But we'll take a look. How about next week? We'll really like we'll it. really dive into these free agents next week. Um, and then we'll look into the draft. 
So I'm sorry what I said at the top that we were going to talk about it. We we're lied. Not, we lied. Gonna we're not going to do that at all. So instead, till next week. Let's get to some Twitter cool. questions. Let's do it. Real quick, I wanted to point out that uh, twenty-eight million dollars in hundred-dollar bills is about the size of a fridge without the freezer compartment. I said that it was a really big suitcase. Yeah, that, that's so, that's wow. about that's what a really big suitcase. Twenty-eight million dollars in hundreds, not even ones, hundreds. That's my what goodness. it looks like. Ones is like yeah. the size of my house. Did Google Maybe tell more. you that? Yeah. Uh, well, it's like I, the I looked at, so the twenty-eight million in hundreds is about eleven point three cubic feet. I don't even know what those are. Dude, this is yeah. not. Twitter question. But is the fridge <laughs> plugged in? So anyways. Do you plug the fridge in? <laughs> and don't. then put the money in? Don't. Keeps uh, it crisp. From Evan McDaniel at Evan ATM. If PG stays, will you get Kyle Sigler's name on your butt cheek? Dude, that, Brandon. Ooh, I don't know. That's. I mean, that doesn't have anything to do with one another. I don't want, want his face Yeah, instead. but because he's a, Get a ash. signature. Like, can I at least get... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> can I at least get a, a tattoo that, like... Uh, is positive. No, what if it was like Paul no. George? Really? What it if it was like Paul negative. George with a suitcase, with a Lakers? Guys, this is my this, this is my sound. life. Yeah, dude, I, we I agreed actually, to this. Yeah, I, I know, but I was out of something all positive. All it is, it's just a face tat. No I, big deal. That's all you have to do is get like George on your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> just and a cross. Make the unibrow. <laughs> this is George. <laughs> 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 Brandon, I'll be honest with you. I've had uh, I've had a few ideas that I wanted to slip to you under the table at some point, just so I can get a cool tattoo and not have to do all this. So I want to. I've got some stuff. Okay, cool. Okay, I want to hear them. Uh, from Carrie Cicero at Sis sixty six, would you rather hang out with Josh Hustis in beautiful Montana or Jeremy Grant in Oregon during the summer? I believe tough question. This guy's from Montana, right? Yes. I I kind of really want to go to Portland like really bad in mm. Oregon. Like I've, I've never been to like the Pacific Northwest, so I I, I would do I'm that. I'm about to go there. It actually. does depend on what part of like Oregon you're in, right? Yeah. I don't know exactly where Jeremy Grant is from. Montana, that's the same, right? <laughs> like every <laughs> square here. mile of Montana is basically the same. It's I would huge still too. It, it is be, so huge. Pretty, I've heard it's like beautiful though. Yeah. Oh yeah. It would be cool to go see Montana. Yeah, I think. I think that. And Houston seems like be it'd be cool I to go, hang I out with. I mind like that. Oregon, I feel like it's something that I might do on my own. I'll probably never do Montana on my own. So like, so if why someone not hang out with Josh me, there? Yeah, exactly. What uh, do you think Josh is doing? Fishing. Fishing. He's caught Yo, some no, fish. I mean besides playing, besides playing fishing. Fortnite. Mm-hmm. And Nothing. Fishing. <laughs> fishing. He's, do, he's doing trying basketball to keep, camps. Trying to keep uh, Paul George here, right? He's trying to sending him stamps of his fish. Hey, me too, bud. Yeah. He's hiking to his fishing location. Come to Montana. From Ben Burke 10 at Ben underscore Burke 10. How does one become an owner of a large city? LeBron owning Toronto, for example. Oh, That's yeah. basically the Got whole him. country of Canada. Oh, man. Yeah. That's Those so poor crazy. Raptors. I feel, I feel bad. real bad for him, man. It's hilarious, but I also feel bad. Very funny. Also very sad. How are they just completely owned by one player? Mm. Did you see the stats with like the combined Lowry and DeRozan oh, yeah. were like so similar? Yeah. To like the LeBron same did points as him. But honestly, know. like it, if you were starting a team and someone was like, you can have Lowry and DeRozan or no, you can have LeBron. 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 You're taking LeBron. Even yeah. though he's 97 years old. And it doesn't matter. He's like the doesn't best matter. he's ever been right now. It's so That's weird. That's crazy. Well, I think the Raptors make him look that way. But he's also the best he's ever he's been, I think. He's also so good. Like, yeah. he's so good right now. He's kind of having that similar, like, Russ season I wouldn't be last shocked year. at all if he doesn't make the finals. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be shocked. Who's going to beat him? Celtics. Sixers. What? <laughs> what the camera back? Sixers have the better chance than the Celtics. LeBron's Someone's in the finals. Does someone want to yeah, look up that score real quick? Uh, From know. Always and Forever Art, at Always and Forever Art. So Donovan Mitchell is being praised for emptying the clip in an elimination game. How did try, how die, wait, how die trying mentality is being celebrated? Oh, his die trying mentality. Ah, there we go. There it was. Words are hard right now. They are. Uh, why the double standard with Russ? He gets ridiculed for for it, not praised. Such a good question. Yeah, it really is. It is a good question, but I, butchered. I think when Russ was a rookie, if he'd have done the same thing, it'd have probably been praised. Yeah, that's the biggest yeah. thing. Once it goes on, been here for a bit. once you do it year after year after year, then like people yeah. are like, ooh, I don't like that anymore. There's already a narrative to reinforce yeah. with those people. With yeah, but which you got Paul Donovan George standing Mitchell, over there not taking shots. Donovan Mitchell could do the same same exact thing where he just has to try and – we could see this years to come, and then you could see the exact – like he could get what Russ is getting now. Where yeah, it's like, like well, later they'll be like, dude, try. I, I think eventually Donovan Mitchell, like 
he's not going to be a 50% shooter. Like that's Dude, not his, his ability. That's to... not who he is. So I think at one point he's going to get to a point where people are going to turn on him a little bit and they're going to be like, he's, he's pretty inefficient. Like he's a volume score, but he's his, awesome. Like his, yeah. his ability can, to drive and kick is yeah, like really, blowing my mind. Last night. Yeah. That's he's, crazy. A, he's he can do it all. That's what I love about him. from Matt Stevens at big old Matt. Big old How Matt. credible are the Westbrook <laughs> trade rumors? Oh, yeah, this is something we failed to bring up. I don't think they're trade rumors. Uh, It was just Zach Lowe said that he heard from several league executives, I guess, or people around the league that I I guess it was that the Thunder should start looking to possibly move him. Yeah, that ain't If things keep going this way, which I think this this city would probably be burned to the ground if that happened. Yeah, it's not happening this year, and it's probably not happening next year. Yeah. No. They, I think you're going to ride it out with Russ until it's just not working but, at all. But, you know, the, the only way I think that the organization trades Russ is if he says, Trade. yeah, I'm ready to be traded. Uh, you are so, correct. So, from Evan McDaniel at Evan ATM, would you trade Russ for Kyrie and the Celtics' first pick next year? Next question. <laughs> That's kind of what I That's thought. That's kind of curious. <laughs> I'm interested. Almost, I'm we're so almost sorry. at the point where Russ has so much, like, just value to the city as just who he is yeah. that you don't. You and Kyrie don't do thinks it. the world's I don't do flat. It. That bothers yeah. me. No, I don't That's do it either. Stupid. I don't do it. From OKC Thunderama at OKC Thunder- Thunderama, Melo for Ibaka. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Although, Bring him back. Melo's on, like, Ibaka's on a bad contract too, but nowhere near as bad as Melo. He'd be no, so much better of a player. Even though he can't even do it. And you still. could bench Ibaka and he'd be all right probably with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he'd, be <like. laughs> he'd be fine. Mitch McGiddy. Get through it. From Gifé at Rio Feji. <laughs> Do you think there's a big risk that Russ's athleticism declines due to age or injuries, or does he pull LeBron? Um, I'm no. hoping for that LeBron, but it, he's I mean, not that he is. If LeBron. there's he's anyone so else, if there's anyone else in the league that could, Russ has got to be the guy, right? I don't know. Yeah, I he's just, just think had, he's had a lot of wear and tear. It's That's just too sure. much to ask, like a guy to do. Like I just can't. Like LeBron is the only person we've ever seen that do, that is doing this. Yeah, it's really, really, really. So it's. That he's but you're right. Getting Ru- better. Russ so. is a freak. I mean, but I would. I just want to see Russ work on the things and get better at the things that will benefit him going forward when that athleticism does decline. Right. Yeah, that's a fair point. From Cork Germain at Cork Germain uh, underscore in there. When a team pays the tax, where does that money go? Does the league retain it? Is it distributed to the non-tax teams? So. I actually kind of looked that up earlier, and I don't have it pulled up right now, but it's something like basically 50% of it goes to uh, the non-tax paying teams, right? You want to read the thing? Yeah. I can read the thing. Read the thing. So, as in the previous CBA, the tax revenue is divided among teams with lower payrolls. However, under the new scheme, no more than 50% of the total tax revenue can go exclusively to teams that did not go over the cap. Initial reports did not specify the use of the remaining 50% under the 2011 CBA, but it was later confirmed that this amount will, will excuse me, would be used to fund revenue sharing for the season yeah. during mm-hmm. which the tax was paid. So yeah, sounds all right. Yeah. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Follow us on Twitter at OKC Thunder. It's Justin's over at Thunder Talk. We're at OKC Thunders everywhere, even on Tumblr, probably. Mm, do we have one of those? No. No. <laughs> we should now, no. though. Now we're gonna be held to it. <laughs> Subscribe on iTunes, uh, YouTube, Google Play, anywhere that podcasts are found. You can find us. You can find us on Spotify. OKCThunderheads.com for all of your Thunder needs. One thing we failed to mention today, Paul George underwent surgery today for uh, left knee scope. He'll be out six to eight weeks. Let's hope that uh, holds him out through free agency. He has to resign. <laughs> I guess. Nobody wants it. Nothing to add there? Nope. Right. We're good. We'll be, <laughs> we'll be back next week with another one. Till then, as always, Thunder up. Really solid, guys. Really solid. Mm, Good stuff. Good stuff.